Hello. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at you, trying to catch you in the weirdest moment. <laughs> and I got it. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Good, uh, good day. Good day, sir. Welcome to yet another Postman live stream where uh, we're going to not make you win or lose money. This is all informational. We may talk about stocks. We don't know anything about stocks. Oh, is this but, your legal disclaimer? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All of this is happening on this stream. Doesn't represent the company. <laughs> um, OK, anyway, I'm Arlemi, developer advocate at Postman. And I'm here with Joyce. Who are you, Hi, Joyce? I'm in developer relations, and I'm based in San Francisco. Hi, Hannah Neal. Hi, Hannah. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> Um, so today we have planned, and let me look at the description. Uh, you don't know what we're doing today, are we? I know exactly what we are doing today. I know all of the things. Today... Oh, Andy Piper is here too. Hi, Andy. I feel like we must have made this stream at the perfect time for Andy to join. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, had our office, our monthly office hours on Tuesday, and this is our regular weekly thing where we typically build something, but our Lumi... Today's no. stream was up to you, right? Exactly. And I know exactly what we're doing. So actually today, uh, there's been stuff in the happening in the stock market lately. If you've heard of about GameStop, um, so there was, you must have heard about it. Um, if you've not heard about it, long story short, probably is uh, some company tried to make money on the company doing bad, on GameStop doing bad. And all the little Redditors came together uh, and bought some stock, which made the stock go high. And the company, the stock investment company, uh, lost money instead. So what we're trying to do today during the stream, we'll uh, use a stock trading API to see uh, how we can check the value of one stock at, at a certain time. And we visualize it. So we'll see the stock moving up and down. And then uh, we'll try to use the Reddit API to uh, check what's happening on the Wall Street Bets subreddit and see if we can maybe correlate what's happening or if we can just get some uh, some information on like what are the latest talks that have been talked about on uh, Wall Street Bets, etc. Am I missing was anything? That, was that your uh, explanation of what a short squeeze was? That's like, no, no. I can, should we go into short squeeze or should I do in case you missed it first? Uh, okay, yeah, in case start, with, <laughs> start easy. OK, so and before we jump into it, uh, while I have your attention, I'm going to jump into In Case You Missed It. So in Case You Missed It is what we do at the beginning of each stream, uh, just talking about something that you may have missed around the Postman ecosystem. And this time, we're going to talk about this blog post. In case you missed it. I need to hide. I need to show this. OK, so if you're trying to learn about Postman and you, may want, and you want to show your friends, uh, all that you've learned and that you know stuff, you can get badges and you can actually learn about Postman on Postman. So we had a, a run of like five streams where we kept calling everything um, Postmanception or Twitchception. This is like the perfect Postmanception, so that, which means you'll be in Postman, doing Postman things, learning about Postman, using the Postman API, and you'll get a Postman badge. Um, so if you want to learn about how you can do all this, I'm going to link this blog in the chat and this page for everyone to see. Yeah, and these came out of our workshops that we did for Postman Galaxy, the conference that we just had recently. Uh, and we had a bunch of um, workshops where people were sitting. I mean, they were that we had instructors leading people through it, but you can actually go through the course content yourself and get the badge. I did the APIs 101 one, so I'm waiting for my badge now. But as soon as <laughs> I get my badge awarded, I'm going to put it up on my profile. I actually did it too. I, I wanted to do them all this week, but uh, I guess Which I still one have, did you I still do? have one. The Galaxy, the APIs 101 as well. You chose the easy one? Nice. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, there's three of them, uh, actually. Hannah hmm. Neal. Which one did you do? Which course did you take or which badge did you? She did the testing one. Get. 
The testing one? So that's, wow. I, I see four here. Uh, API is one-on-one training. So this one is not Postman related. It's really, obviously you're in Postman, so you, you see how you can do Postman things, but one on it, um, API 101, one on testing and automation, one on API adoption. So uh, kind of just stuff around API mocks, monitors, et cetera, um, and API first training. So this one is actually starting from a, an API specification. I, mean, I think open API, yeah, open API three. And from there, you'll generate different uh, different content and you edit them, share them, et cetera. Yeah, a bunch of, uh, so we had the student expert badges first and a bunch of API professionals took the, took the student training because that was the only badge we were offering at the time. And the student training is actually pretty good. Um, it does require some technical skills, but I think um, Sue did a good job of walking people through, um, especially if you don't have a technical background, you can probably still get through it. Yep. Okay, and that these are the badges. You can get them all. Uh, you, In case you missed it. You can't actually get them all. I think for this one, you have to be a student. And you should be a student for this one too, but I, I know some people take it anyway, even though they're not students, which is fine. Uh, it's still knowledge, so it's always good. Okay, cool. Back to the short squeeze. What is this? What is a short squeeze? What is the short squeeze you speak of, Arlami? Do you want to drop a link to what um, subreddit is it? Yeah. <laughs> Let me I'll share my screen again. So the subreddit that we're talking about is Wall Streets. Wall Streets? Wall Street Wall Street. Let's, OK. Oh, I don't to put the dot com. So what's happening here, uh, it's supposed to be people talking about um, stocks and kind of going against the the big companies and taking bets and they're just sharing all their earnings or lost, et cetera, based on the stock. It's like uh, recommendations? Um, it's recommendations if you want to be recommended, but it's not like, it's not professionally advised recommendation. Let's put it that way. This is kind all of like this live stream. Yeah, exactly. This is all community based. Uh, it's people that may or may not know what they're doing. Uh, so anything that's there, take it with a pinch of salt, just like anything on the internet, to be honest. So yeah, it's just another place on the internet where people know what they're doing or may not know and say that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one is specifically about stock. Uh, stock. So you can see a lot of talk about GME, which is the oh, short code, stock the code, ticker, ticker for uh, GameStop. And this has been going on for like so long. I'm pretty sure if you look at all the top ones for um, the last month, probably, uh, it's all going to be GameStop, uh, Super Bowl, GameStop, GameStop. So yeah, it's been all around this subreddit for the last at least month. Uh, hi, Sean. Hi, John. Yeah, it's a ticker. OK. I, As you can tell, I do not know much about stocks. so. Um, we'll ask Joyce now. Uh, <laughs> what's <laughs> Arlene, I asked you if I needed to do anything for the stream, and you said no. I asked you every day for an entire week, and you want me to do what now? Explain what's a short squeeze. Uh, can you? Oh, John's work alias can help. Phew. <laughs> can you pull up a website for me? Um, yes. Is the squeeze close.com? Is the squeeze close? Yeah. So this website does an amazing job of what is explaining what is going on with the whole GameStop. And it's not just GameStop, it's a few stocks is my understanding. And so Arlami, you were saying that some, you know, hedge fund or some financial institutions were coming in to essentially buy GameStop stock when it's low. Actually, it's not. They weren't buying it. They were borrowing, theoretically, buying in theory uh, stocks and then selling them. So that's a short sell when you don't actually own it, that stock, but you're selling it at a presumed price. And so the Redditors all band together and they said, let's buy. And the more they buy, the higher the price goes. And now there's a disparity between the price with which these hedge funds and financial institutions assume they could borrow a stock at the price for and what the current price is for. So at a certain point, these people have to actually 
fulfill their promises and buy these stocks. And now they have to buy in like this delta between the stock price is what's really like squeezing them. I don't know if I'm using that word right, squeeze, <laughs> but it's like really holding them over. Okay. I don't want to say that, but it's really got them by the, like, it's really has them. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my explanation. But the squeeze currently has not been squeezed at a certain point. Um, all the people that are holding on to the GameStop, some people have already cashed out, right? But the more people that cash out, the more the hedge funds can actually buy back these stocks at relatively reasonable prices. But then if they keep holding on to it, it really like, they, okay. Oh, John's where Galeas has a nice description here. No more stock things, buy low and sell high. Yeah, that makes sense. I was told the same for cryptocurrencies. And then short selling is the reverse. Sell first, so you sell first high, and then you buy to cover hopefully lower. Yeah, but in this case, they need to buy when it's much, much, much higher. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> so now, so, yeah. what? There's actually, there's, this is one of the things we did want to do during the strip that I forgot, and which is probably the most important. What we want to do is because, like, when the squeeze is getting squoze, what do you want to do? You want to sell yours as well, right? Like that's when everyone needs to go out. Yes, you need to sell what once somebody concertedly says, yes, it's time for us all to sell. You want to sell because then eventually the price will go back down to where um, you know it, the actual valuation should be. Okay. And the actual so valuation is based on the company, but it's also based on people's confidence, like you and my confidence that it'll be high or low. So one of the things we do want to do during the stream is get this website and uh, they don't have an API uh, right there. So we're just going to create some monitor, scrap this page. And whenever we see that this says the squeeze has been squeezed, get an alert, I guess. Yeah. So I feel like on Tuesday, we had office hours and Andy Piper stopped by and said that they got a PS, what's the latest? Five. Console? a PS5 through similar means. So yeah. I wonder, Andy Piper, if you can tell us, how did you get your PS5? Um, I actually have it... this right here. So that's how they did it, as far as I remember. Oh, Xbox. Xbox X S, probably. Uh, it's using, oh, was it using this or was it using some sort of similar thing? This one is I only thought, for GameStop. I okay, Andy yeah. Piper signed up for a um, like a somebody send me an alert when you when I'm supposed to sell or something. Or yeah. In this case, in the PS or the Xbox case, when it's time to buy. Stock Informer. Okay, cool. So I guess like kind of the same principle. You register, say which stock or which uh, product you're looking into, and whenever it's available, it tells you. Go buy. And this usually, or at least uh, I know last Tuesday morning, actually, um, Argos put some stock like in the middle of the night. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people got woken up during the night to run and buy their PS5. Buy. Yeah. That's, uh, how, that's how some of these um, websites work. Like kayak.com is like an aggregator of flight prices, or I think it's flight, flight prices. So they kind of track them all. And then when it falls below a certain, you can sign up for notifications when a flight is cheap, then you can go ahead and be notified so you can buy it or camel, 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 or like some of those things are like inventory. Like, is this a good time to buy this product yeah. because it fluctuates? So there are services like this, but what we're going to try to do is build our own, uh, just using some API calls and monitors. So we see how that goes. So yeah, um, yeah, 1 a.m. restocks sucks. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, let's. Well, it's one a.m. for somebody, right? But not for the person who's restocking it, maybe. Oh no, it is. It, it actually is. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this one. Um, yeah, it was one a.m. in the UK for some reason. I mean, it's not like obviously it's not physical restocking. It's just online retailing, so it's available at some time. And then, but yeah, like I remember when the PS Five came out, Amazon and all the other websites that had it like were just down by people like just keeping on refreshing the page, etc. Um, 
I got mine at 7 a.m. that because I don't sleep. Uh, I guess that sounds like a solution, but <laughs> is is sleeping not important? <laughs> um, okay, so this one was something. Uh, it, it's kind of uh, we talked about how you can use a website to do it. So again, like stock informer, and there's probably plenty other. We're not like uh, specifically talking about this one. This person created one uh, in a terminal. Um, so same idea, you can uh, have it running in your terminal, you put a ticker, now that I know it's called a ticker, um, and it's just gonna run some analysis for you and I guess tell you, is it just checking? Oh uh, yeah, it's actually just checking the, giving you stats, etc. It doesn't alert you whenever you need to set it or whatnot, but it does have market sentiment which is kind of what we're going to try to do as well. What's okay. market sentiment or what does it read in for market sentiment? Just trends? So this one is based on Reddit as well. Uh, this one is based on what other users using this watch list, I'm guessing. Uh, and uh, no, this is all Reddit. And then this is all from different sources. So it's using Twitter as well. Um, based on tweets. And I'm guessing there's different things you could do as well here. There's always like, so especially for cryptocurrencies mostly, there's like influencers whenever they'll uh, then mention Bitcoin or something that that Bitcoin is gonna go up uh, to a certain extent. So you could uh, you could try to to watch this type of stuff. It's like listening, listening for the number of occurrences of somebody saying Bitcoin or something like that? Yeah. Stock sentiment. Oh, I, I'm guessing it also checks. So because people talk about a stock doesn't mean it's going to go up. If everyone's just like saying, oh, I just dropped this and yeah. everyone is saying the same thing, obviously it means everyone's selling and it's not a good thing. So that, that's probably the sentiment bit where it's probably negative or positive. I don't know. We've done a stream on Twitter sent sentiment before and that got us in a hot water because we were pulling <laughs> inappropriate oh, yeah. tweets. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, Kevin Swiber giving some good recommendations <laughs> of what to, what to look for. Um, okay, cool. So we want to start with this probably. Get this page, do some scrapping and check. We don't know what this is going to be replaced by. So I'm guessing we just check if this is not this. What? Like, what was your idea into like how to check if it's been squoze? So this page will tell us um, when, if you read through this page, it'll say, hey, come back here, make sure you hold on your stock. And then once it is time to sell, this page will be updated to say, and you can sign up for notifications, the squeeze has been squoze. In which case, if you come here and you're like, it has been squoze, you're like, oh, I'm too late. I need to um, sell my stock quickly. So one stupid way to do this, stupid and laggy way <laughs> to do this is to pull this site, pull it, and then scrape it, and then find out when the squeeze has been squoze. Yeah, so that's what I meant, right? Like, that's what we're going to do. But scrapping this, you can't, obviously, you would check what's on the page, but we don't know what it's going to be replaced with. We don't know if it's going to say the squeeze has been squoze or, like, just sell like big time so we just check if it's different from this got it okay okay so let's go and do this so a new collection oh what is my title oh did you let's turn see. on the discourse banner i wasn't able to. Uh, i did not okay let's do this uh -huh. That's what I got too. 404. But I hovered over and it looked correct. Yeah, I don't want to check now. Okay, case. I don't want to derail this. Yeah, I'll do it on the other screen. Uh, okay, so I created a new collection that now I've lost. It should be somewhere here. Cool. Um, and I'm going to recall it. So John's work alias is helping us in the chat, um, points out that there's the title in the HTML, 
and it might say the word yes. Oh, yeah. We could just get this. Oh, yeah. Let's see. So, do we know that the they're conscientious enough to update the title? <laughs> True. Uh, I guess, yeah. That that's like sounds very important. You would just have it in the tab, and you would see it straight away. Probably built it with that in mind. So I got that URL, created a new request from it, and now I'm sending a request and see if that works. This is not financial advice. Yeah, none, not at all. Nothing said in this stream this is financial advice. <laughs> but really, go by now. Just kidding. Don't, don't. That was a joke. Request timed out. Hmm, not a good start. Let's see. Why? You were having connectivity issues before the stream. Is it internet? I have my Postman agent running. It. And can you move our faces so you can show us how you're troubleshooting? Yes. I will move our faces to the side. OK. So um, it said request timed out. So I was looking if I had my desktop agent running, which seems to be running. It's connected. It's listening. And it says I've selected the desktop agent, but it's still not working. How so, come you're using desktop agent instead of cloud agent? Uh, cloud agent has a limit of requests per month. And I don't want to run them, run through them because I could use them on my phone or other device. Got it. So I'll click view in console, see if there's anything, but it's just timed out. Okay, cool. And cool. I'm going to run again. It's probably, ah, okay. Hello. So it worked. Let's see. So we actually do have the title here. So we could just use that. And otherwise, it's basically the same thing we've seen on the website. Uh, we have the same thing here. It's the website. So now we need to write some tests to check what's on there. Um, Oh, in case you missed it, all the links are now blue and not orange anymore. Why? Why'd they make it blue? Wait, is that a real release? Yeah, it's uh, accessibility. Oh, because they're more visible? Yeah. So now everything is blue, blue. Yeah, it's How orange. How do people under, like, measure the contrast between... Is it just somebody says like, cause I, I've been trying to figure out whether or not light theme and dark theme is better for accessibility. And some people say like on websites, this is better, but on- No, there's, this is... there's actual math behind it. Um, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a contrast color generator that you give it one main color and it generates a bunch of, or derivates uh, other colors based on your main one. Uh, there are fixed measures. It conforms with Microsoft front page 1997 style guide. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's like, it, it's actual science. Science, OK. Science. That's okay. all you had to say, it's science. <laughs> so how do we do that? We have, I guess, first thing is get the. There, why are you doing there? Because that's how it's done. OK, sorry. I don't want to question everything you're doing. We already have one, which is response body is equal to a string, which is basically what we're going to do, right? Like, we're going to check something in the body, and we're going to check whether it's that string or not. But we're going to want to go lower down. Uh, that said, this is HTML. So it's, there's no easy way to navigate through that. Um, yes, there is. Just, oh, it's there. I don't know if you know, but there's Cheerio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, OK, all right. <laughs> no, but actually, please tell me more. What is Cheerio? It's one of the inbuilt. I've used it once for web scraping is how I know that it's one of the inbuilt libraries. Um, but I don't remember the syntax or how to use Cheerio. And this is what we do. So we have a, if I search straight away. If we have any web scraping enthusiasts out there, you can also help with us. Oh, so yeah. we can use Cheerio like this. We declare a new uh, variable that loads uh, the response, so whatever the website re returns into it. And then we can 
I guess then we just go through it with like just like you would with any like, query or let's see. Let's keep this for now. Uh, can I do this? Nice. Okay. So send this, and now we are putting it in the console. So I'm gonna have a look at the console and see. Okay, so it's basically just the uh, just the HTML. Yeah. Can I do selectors on it then? Yeah, you should be able to get like tags. Let's see. Now we go to Cheerio. Yes. Okay, so I can just say what I want directly. And what I want is this. Does it have a class? Hmm. So it's main dot h1. Dot span. Okay. So you're trying to retrieve the HTML HTML element instead of uh, just reading the text. Yeah. Let's see if I do just dollar dot main. Did it send? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like that website is struggling. Are we giving it the old postman twitch hug of death? <laughs> I'm just going to keep spamming because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Well, if this if this <laughs> page goes down, we might have to actually track this at underlying stock. Or we could target, not target, but like. Here. Hmm. I'm surprised Let's that see. it doesn't have a like an updated thread that says whether or not the squeeze has been closed. Okay. Let's look at the console. Uh, the other main is the function. So I, do I need to keep the... How much do you know about Cheerio? I can look it up on a separate tab. <laughs> Let's see, do you have auto completion? No. Mm, so this is to edit, but we want to check what's in there. Andy Piper wants us to stack this. overflow. Stack overflow knows all Sorry, you, does. you were inspecting and you found a span that you wanted to target? Yeah, that you wanted to go to. So I'm checking now. Uh, so this returns the old HTML. But it doesn't look like it can actually go down. Uh, so I probably just have to look for it. Oh, you wanted to traverse. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you did, yeah, I can only get HTML head or body. Um, so I could I could just go for the title. Title. So, yeah. So if I get the head here. This is John's work alias's suggestion. We're assuming that the developer is going to be conscientious enough to update the title. Um, and we could just say, is it squoze? Hmm. Copy? It's not available. What's not available? I sh um, do I need to do it here? Uh, I, I guess I just need to do HTML and just do the whole thing. But I don't so see the. I don't see the point of using Cheerio then, if it's just a string of the whole page. Uh, you can actually, from HTML, then you can grab tags. Maybe turn it into HTML. Is it HTML? It's a string right now? It's a string. Steven Martin is uh, not being critical, <laughs> but complimenting and saying, <laughs> it's nice watching people debug on the spot instead of watching edited YouTube videos. Well, so, we have a whole playlist of us debugging <laughs> stuff. So if you're interested. Yeah. And Stephen, if you Stephen Martin, if you want to help us, uh, for example, some people like will Google at home and help us. Yeah, so Arlami, yeah. 
We don't have HTML parser, right? But do you know how to get it? No, you should be able to actually do it directly. I've done this yeah. before in Cheerio, it's and it's like been three lines of code. We just need to figure out the syntax for how to get the, I think it's that dollar sign. Um, Cheerio, JS. And then you do in string, like what element? So maybe string span. Get element. I. Hmm. I know where I can get an example. I'll Six work elements. on that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see if I do this. Is that how I select something? Yeah, OK. Ah, here we go. Gosh, you got to clear that console. <laughs> Yeah, so if I do, if I select a list of elements, it returns an array yeah. uh, of elements. So that's what I want. Okay, cool. So, so you could just select the. Um... Yeah, I could do just the H1, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's do instead of this, go H1. H1. Uh, let me clear it and say it again. Okay. It's a list of one. There's only one. He has three children, and I'm guessing one of them would be the span, which then has two children. Oof, that's like, has not. That's what we want. Cool. Um, if we expect has not to change or go away. So we, we could just check, yeah, if this is true, right? So console log the dash one. And this is, I should be able to go down through that, right? Couldn't you just take the whole text and say, if has not is there? Uh, that's not like, what if there's another? <laughs> no, <Has not. laughs> no, but it's just like, there's actually really notes on this website. What if in one of these, there's written has not? Mm, then it's point. always true, yeah. right? Good so we, we do want to focus on this bit. Uh, but how do I go down in this? Can I just go? That's not an array. It's like, Dot zero dot. No, that's not gonna like that. Yeah, what is it? It's an object. Yeah. Let's see what this returns. I need to clear every time. Oh, it's gonna lag again. Sometimes what I like to do if I'm having trouble getting back, um, reliably getting back a response is I save the response as an example. So I, mm. if I'm having internet difficulties, I can go look at the example. That's a very good idea. Let's do that again. Okay, so what you're saying, I can save that as a response. Yeah. Um, save as example. And now this is saved and I can just play a lot like, with that, right? Yeah, it's not great because you're still just gonna literally look at the HTML. Um, let's see. Ah, nope. Okay, and define. So I don't want the children. What do I want? Oh, I should have kept the solution. I. I think we need to look at the at the H, at the um, H one object again. Yeah, so that's how it looks. H one with um, zero children, and the second children has uh, one that says has not. Yeah, so scroll up. So this whole thing is H1, right? Yep. And it's an object? Yep. So you need to go, uh, oh, dot children was undefined? Yeah, which was weird. 
So Postman has a way, a new syntax. I think we got tripped up on this last time, Arlami, where the way Postman displays the, they're trying to make it better. But I think maybe if we look at the raw, do you think that would help? The row of this. See how this is like syntax? Yeah. Response so there's body. a raw log, oh, yeah. right? Okay. I don't know if this will help. Oh gosh, it's so it's so big. It's such a tiny window. Yeah, actually, let me. I can't really see anything on the screen. Okay. Oh, this is better. Thank you. Um. Well, it doesn't show anything different. If I say show raw. We're not going to get stuck on these for so long, are we? You know what? I can just do pickle. And... You need to collapse your console. No, I do want to see what's happening oh, on the console. Oh, got it. I see that this one is still loading. It's still running. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I can do in the meantime. Is how did we call that? Oh, collection again has been scores. Okay, it's the same. I was just trying on the side to run it in the desktop app, and it's the same, it just uh, times out. Yeah, I so I wish, yeah, okay, it's just. It's going to be the same thing here. Okay. Uh, we have a title, and it said, "Is it squares?" Uh, I'm guessing no. Okay. Should we just go straight to the stock, which is going to be a bit more interesting than this, because this one is just like going through an object and finding the right thing. Sure. I think um, if anybody has ideas in the chat about what, oh no, I'm having connectivity <laughs> issues now. Um, so yeah, this is one way to potentially monitor a web page for when text changes. And then, um, well, we haven't built anything else out yet. We're literally just sending <laughs> one API call. Uh, yeah, do whatever you want, Arlami. Do you have um, keys for another API? Yeah, I'm just sad because uh, I feel like this should, it's complaints for some reason. Right. What if we go just further down? One dot type. Yeah. Okay. It's just not seeing it. Oh well. You could do. What, sorry. What are you trying to do? Just Find steal. It. Yeah, Literally still access that first H one. Yeah, I'm just so, trying to access this children object, and the only mm -hmm. annotation that I don't have is this. So one way that I've done this before is just to like take to loop through it with code instead of like parsing it immediately. Sorry, my lunch is being delivered now. <laughs> so if you go, um, so assign H one, uh, or just say like, oh, ooh, John's work alias is helping. When I do dev like this, especially against the document, I save the response to an environment variable and then test code against the safe data. Second so call and use pre request script. Yeah, so instead of parsing directly, something that I, I that might be helpful is like on row six, if you go like um, h1 dot uh, after the parentheses dot each. Yeah, I, I kind of didn't want to do <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what are we going to call what's in there? Uh, item. Because then it's just like a lot of uh, each function item, and then we just want um, 
mean, you can already. I so I did it. Yeah. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so now we have the first one. Oh no! Wait, let's do the same thing. Is there only one? Okay. H one. Yeah, there's only one. That's that is not working. Uh, well. Okay. Uh, fail. It was worth a shot. Yep. We can come back to that after. Uh, okay. At the end. But unfortunately, can't see. Hey, if you if you save that, I'm I'm in that same workspace, and I can work on it locally yeah. in parallel. It is saved. You should be able to access okay. it. Sounds good. Okay, cool. So Joyce does that. What what I'm going to do in a previous stream, we used uh, the Tingo API. So I'm going Tingo. to go and have a look at Tingo. I remember it's that API. It was really easy to use. Yeah, which is an API that just has access to uh, basically the values of the stock markets. And straight from the main page, you have an API tab, which I love to see because it means is it's going it to be worldwide? easy to use. Um, hmm. It does. It like, I see California. Well, S&P is the top NASDAQ, 500 Dow, in the US. Yeah. NASDAQ, I actually don't know. Again, I actually don't know anything about stock. So let me go log in. Oh. And I'm going to quickly hide my screen <laughs> because I know there's a there's a little. I don't know how big Tingo is, but the last time we did a stream, I leaked my key and I reached out to have it to a person to have it revoked and they did it immediately. So lovely <laughs> team over there. Thank you, Tingo. Okay, so I'm going to go in the API, but I'm going to do that on the screen next to me. Because I think the API documentation, uh, just as you open it, gives you your authentication. Um, so I don't want to leak this. OK, uh, can I do? Okay, I've went around it. So I'm on the API docs now. And there's an overview introduction, which explains like, the different endpoints that they have, uh, how to authenticate. And my API token was here, but I've removed it. Um, and what we want to check is probably the end of the value. I think that's why this was very easy to do. Uh, there's no actual. It's a batch. Yeah, it's like. It resists everywhere. It's not like real time. You wouldn't use that if you were like doing a very low latency trading. Yeah. Uh, but we don't really do low latency, so we can just use. Um, have you heard of that day? book, Flash Boys? I have not. It's about um, some people that built a new internet connection by like drilling through the mountain or something, or like going from, they wanted to do the, what's it called? EFT, what's that? Electronic. Foundation something. Oh, I didn't have that. Is that what's that word? HFT. No, E, F, high frequency. High frequency trading. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting this mixed up. But yeah, it's like <laughs> the one where people like day traders, which day trading is not recommended in general because um, it's not as reliable, but day traders want to be really fast. And so they built a new internet connection that allows you to reduce the latency by milliseconds, but those milliseconds allow you to buy or sell a lot more, you know, in front of anyone else. Electro okay. Electronic so, funds transfer. Transfer, okay, that's not what I <laughs> Have you guys heard about this thing? Now go ahead and send your money over here. Um, um, but okay. to your point, Arlami, is the latency is something to consider when you're talking about these financial transactions. And so we're not building anything like 
um, something where immediately something happens and now something else executes with no latency. There is always going to be latency, even if you're doing this, um, uh, you know. And that's why, pull. yeah, that's why you like during the COVID times, I know like investment banks, the people that would have to go back to the office would be their traders because that's where the high speed internet is. And that's where like they can have like do these things the fastest as possible. And oh, they had to call in from their terminals. Yeah. yeah. Low latency messaging. Okay. So, um, I've got actually a latest price thing, so I'm going to use this endpoint. Bring it here, and I'm going to add a new request to that collection. Where is it gone now? It's here. Oop, put it at the top. Man, that mm. squeezes Squo's website is really struggling. Yeah, so you're seeing the same. It's not just me. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, add request. And this one is going to be called Tingo again. Okay. And the ticker was GME. Um, we can make that a path parameter and put it in here. And then reminder to put my credentials in there, um, which I'm going to do off screen. Ooh. Enjoy my beautiful. <laughs> that surprise Pikachu? <laughs> yeah. It's the best Pikachu. Good for you for remembering to hide your secrets, Arlami. <laughs> Um, Gosh, it's so crisp. Authentication. Should I just hide my screen? Well, tell us what you're doing at least. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh, you know what? I'll leak my key. <laughs> Andy I've been. Piper, I've been we, so good so far. We gave um, the website our good old hug. Oh, the, the whole website now. doesn't load. <laughs> Uh, it is actually pretty simple. Yeah, on I don't know for which reason it seems to slow here, but and on Postman it just times out completely. I may just have it in cache to be honest, because it's not a hard page to to save in cache. John's work alias. Go ahead and turn on my lamp. See if you can turn it on. I no one said hi to me in a while. <laughs> um, okay, so how do I handle um, authentication? Oop. In order to, you must sign up to create an account. All accounts are free. Um, once you your account, we will sign an authentication token. Do you need okay. a key? I have a key already. Okay. It's right below here. Oh, I see. Um, <laughs> oop. Okay. Using our REST API is super easy to do. We love we love that. Um, to use the REST API, you must let us have a new have an account. That's fine. I can pass it within the request URL or Very into safe. the Very safe. request headers. So in the Still URL, <laughs> add a token and copy and paste example below. Or in the request headers, it needs to be an authorization token, uh, my token. OK, so yeah. we can do this one, authorization. And I think now we can actually change the keyword for this, no? Uh, no, we can't. You could do it. Yes, there was way. one, yeah. Is it the basic auth? No, the basic auth is user and password. API key? No, there is definitely no. one where you could change it. But do you know the workaround? Unless, unless we we've rolled back, uh, the workaround is going straight to the headers and put it here. So we had authorization. Or, or was there another workaround where you actually like headed it on the fly? Oh no, John's work alias. I had a power outage a while and I was thinking about this. Did I restart my server? No, it's not on. Sorry. Oh wait, I think I unplugged it. I'll be right back. Arlene, you got this right. Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, so I'm creating a variable here, uh, which doesn't, which isn't assigned to anything. I'm going to put it in my, um, in my collection variable. So this is the name of my variable. I'll set it as a new one. Um, this is going to be the name. Oop. And oh, the you scope like is using that be, little uh, I tooltip? love I love this. This I can't do. So setting variable. So now, it, oh, yeah, Whoa. obviously. That's because I didn't need this. 
Um, if I go here, I have a new one right here, but the value is not the right one. So I am not going to put my real token, which is here. Oop, oop. Okay, cool. Promise you, this has my token in there. Uh, it says it's orange, so it's good. And now we're going to send a request. It worked. It means I identified. So easy. Um, this is the adjusted close uh, value, adjusted high, adjusted low, open, etc. Cool. Um, and now from that, um, at what time, at what value would the squeeze have been squoze? So it's not a, it, I don't think it's a set amount. I think it's when, once. Like the amount been, of people. Once it's been, once somebody communicates, hey, it's time to like, like stop squeezing. I don't know the <laughs> verb. Once it's time to sell, then you'll see the price go down. Um, uh, because there's going to be a lot of availability in, I think, maybe we track the drop the in price. Okay. A, okay. Like a day-to-day -day drop or yep. it, you, I mean, this is daily? We can do, we can save the value in uh, as a variable and then compare to the previous one and see if the drop is like bigger than a certain amount. How frequently is this figure updated? And then run it. Uh, so actually, like if you look at the, this is the latest price endpoint. Uh, wait, before I open this, oop. Okay. So this is the latest price endpoint, and it says it's updated. Hmm. It's not the end of day. That would be then uh, the high price for the day. Uh, so you don't have the, yeah, you don't have the real time one. I And I guess if you do from one day to the other, that's like way too big of a... Time to wait. Yeah, is it? Probably, we can always start with time uh, a daily because how frequently this is updated will determine when we schedule our monitor for, assuming that we're going to schedule a monitor when we run our chat yep. at, and then how frequently. Okay. Um, and you can get historical prices like this, but that's by date, though, right? Yep, yep. WebSocket gives real time data. Hmm. WebSocket. Maybe oh, one day we'll be able to do WebSocket in Postman. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day. Oh, and then oh I saw your token. <laughs> hey, it's fine. It's all good. Okay. Um, so it's end of day prayer. Oh, it's end of day. At 5 30 p.m. EST. Yeah, EST. And then it may change people. until 8 p.m. Um, Okay, so it's a daily, okay. a daily um, one figure. Yep. So we can save every time uh, in environment. So let's do. Oh, I guess we use this one, right? The adjusted close. What's adjusted close versus close? Is there a close? Oh, there is a close. Yeah, it doesn't entirely matter because we're just comparing the delta. And the difference is if there were still transaction going through right at the that moment. That had been processed. Yeah. I'm okay. guessing. All right. No, I don't know. Either of those is fine by me. Someone will know on the chat. <laughs> uh, okay. We're going to do some tests John's again. John's work alias says there are sales after the, after close, the close that later get okay. accounted for. Thank you. Okay. So this time, it's not even a, a value check I do. All I need is, really, I just need this. No tests. No tests. Um, Andy Piper is instigating value. in the chat. <laughs> we did agree. Uh, it was actually a PS5 and, a, and an RTX 380, 3080 for me. Uh, 
I thought he wanted an Xbox. He has an Xbox already. They have an Xbox. Is he just collecting consoles? <laughs> well, the, the resale value is very high because it's hard oh, to it's get. an industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to say Xbox is the best console just because you can play Halo on. But that's probably the only thing that they have going for them. I get motion sick from those like first person shooter games. Uh -oh. You and me, Arlami, we were passing around this deep fake uh, video of <laughs> like our faces and just watching that video made me motion sick. I felt nauseated for at least an hour. So you're setting an environment variable you're by setting. parsing the response object. Yep. And the value is going to be close value. Okay, that sounds good, I think. Yes. Uh, does it? You probably want, um, well. Yeah. Let's see. It, it's the current close value, so, okay. Let me create an environment as well. I don't want to put it in this one. Don't dirty it up. Um, environments, new. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> um, bingo, Jenny. Cool. Now I can select. I can actually go here and say, "Oop, That's this is nice. my current environment." And if I send this and look here, ah, no, no. Pn that response to JSON. Yes. Is it because it's an array of it's one? An array of one. Uh, okay, JSON. Cool. We have a value. Um, the issue we're going to have with that, and yes. that's actually something I discussed with uh, John earlier, is the monitor doesn't see the current value. The monitor, because it runs on the cloud, only sees the initial value. Right. So how would we compare from one to the other? Do you have a setting in your settings that to says only use current value because that's a best practice? Per chance. What do you mean? Here? Uh-huh. Ah, could be. Uh, very, very likely actually. Let's see. Um okay, directory. Where, Where would that be? It? it was on this before. Yeah, it was here somewhere. Did they just remove it completely? Data? No. Written headers. Wait, wasn't this just asked recently in a forum or something? Probably. Yeah, so there used to be a setting here that was like persist. Can you command Always persist. On, a... on this. Yeah, on a modal. Does it work on there? Could... Oh. Persist. Nope. Oh, oh. oh. No. No. It can't persist no more. So you're wondering how you set both current and initial value yeah. versus just the initial. I bet Postman changed it to just defaulting by a uh, current. Uh, oh, are you in a team setting? I wonder if that's why. I'm in a team one, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. There's a few workarounds you could do, but. If there's a direct way to do it, that would be better. Yeah. Uh, what could I set it as? Globals, uh, would that be synced? That would be synced. Globals are by the workspace. Collection, for sure. Collection. Yeah, I can just play yeah. in the collection. Then. And actually, very local variables exist throughout the run. Uh, yeah. Although, no, we, no, no, you need to persist. You yeah, need to persist. We, yeah. We, need, we need to persist it from one run to the other. Now, um, hmm, the issue is that I don't want to look at my collection variables because it's, I guess I leaked it already. It doesn't matter. It's just... I mean, you don't have to leak it again. <laughs> <laughs> Click on the environment eyeball, then look at test. Look at what? I mean, text on screen. Use variables to reuse values in different places, work with the current value of variable to print sharing sensitive. OK, so this is just going to tell me why. Uh, 
But if they change the behavior, you can set automatically persist. Automatically persist your variable body. But we just try that, and it's not there anymore. Hmm. Wait, is, does the screenshot have? Oh, okay. Well. In big this will persist. No. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So this probably needs to be updated. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good learn. Um, so it's saved now, and now what we want to do, uh, because it's saved, we need to check between the previous one. Um, we want to start by by comparing, right? Yes. Well, the result. If there is one, but there is one now. Yeah. So you check if uh, pm dot collection variable dot get um, close value. Would that be enough? Would it just say if it exists, or do I need to go like dot length? You're saving it as a. Um... If it's if there's nothing, this should return null. So therefore, this Untrue wouldn't pass. Thing. Yeah. So if there is one, then let's do. Now we'll do some math. Uh, math. Because <laughs> we want to check the difference between the two, right? Like we want to do what's the percentage difference. Yeah, and directional. Well, yeah, directionally. Yeah. So, oh yeah, actually you're right. It needs to be. Uh, we can just say if we do a. Mm, I was gonna say a modulo, that would tell us. Or we can just do minus. Yeah. If you compare if the current negative. one versus an existing one and the current one is lower, meaning like it's a negative value, then it, but like more than a certain amount of negative. OK, so we do uh, current one, which is pm response minus uh, the other one. Uh, you know what? We need to do variables. I'm just wondering. I guess you can always set it up first, right? No, because yeah. then it's gonna no, because it's you're always going to compare the same. Oh no. You can always get the current response first. John's work alias, what what version are you on? I'm just curious. Okay. Yeah, you can and always then, get the server first. If that's no, what you're wondering. Because it's gonna overwrite the the save variable. It to a different name of a variable. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I could save it. OK, that's fine. Yeah, I, I just don't want to operate the same one. Yeah. So like current value versus like So I'm going to save value. it with our result equal result? this. This? And then we want to check. What do we want to check? If it's negative or if it's positive? If it's more than, OK, so oh, gosh, this is basic arithmetic. If it's more than like negative if x dollars higher than is greater than, yeah. Zero, right? Well, no, that's a negative value. OK, let me read what you wrote. Sorry. I mean, we can do. So the, the delta is the current minus the, I don't understand what you're doing up there. Well, up there. So this Hi. is the current one, yes. and this is the saved one. So we're comparing current to previous. Is that placeholder for what you're going to be doing? Where is there a placeholder? The, the previous yeah. one. No. So on row two, it should be pm.response.json0 adjust close minus mm -hmm. pm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Variable. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed. That's my bad. Indubitably. Oh, so John's work alias was at 736.5, and they're currently upgrading. So I don't think, I think they'll change it. If you upgrade to version 8 we're on, um, that the behavior has changed somehow, and we're unable to figure out exactly how it's changed on this particular stream. But we'll get back to you, because that's actually very important, how you work with in initial and current values. OK. So we compare current to previous. Yes. And we want current to be if it's lower, then there's an issue, right? If the current one is much lower, then yeah. something should happen. 
Okay. Otherwise, don't worry about it. So if the current is lower, then it means the result is going to be negative. Correct. Okay, so if... It's I guess, less than or equal to negative three, or one, or zero. Yeah. Zero, zero is fine, zero is fine. <laughs> zero is fine. In that case, we want to check by how much it's negative, right? Sure, so we can like put that in the notification. Or do we just want to notify it went down? Uh, I think we should okay. in the notification in case it's very uh, noisy. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we should do like actual math and compare like the get the, the percentage difference, like by how much it went down. Yeah, let's do some math. <laughs> um, well, where's my paper and pen? Oh, I, I mean like with code. Yeah, yeah, I, but I need to write it down. It okay. helps, helps oh, yeah. my brain. <laughs> Unless you it's know. Too it's too bad we don't have a um, whiteboard on this restream, that would be nice. And then we can send it to everyone and we do the math together. I think it's just so if M dot response. John's work alias says, not sure this approach will make money. May have to sell an Xbox <laughs> at the end. John's work alias, do you have GameStop, GameStop stock? We don't know where you live, so we won't <laughs> rob you when you're rolling in money. So I think we're trying to find like an X percentage change. So you'll take yep. the current minus previous over previous. Current. Minus previous. I need to. Rename them. Yeah, I need to set up like, oh, should I just declare a bunch at the beginning? Declare. I love it. Declare. Current. Bar. Uh, Okay. Current, previous. All uh, of the above. Anything else? Oh, uh, maybe um, result or delta, del uh, delta. Okay, delta. And um, chain. Uh, and um, per like percent, but another word for percent. Delta. Total delta and percent delta. Yes. Total delta percent. Delta. Yeah. Okay. And now here, first thing we do, semicolon. We set... <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> here we set current to be this. Yes, this will help us greatly. And then we set previews to be. I think this can be done outside. It's fine. Yeah. Here that we want to check if it exists before, and then we can do previous equal. And do previous out of there too, so that you could go if previous. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but I, I just don't want that to complain that this doesn't exist, and therefore. I see. I see. Okay. See. Yeah. Oh, do you know? Do you know ternaries? Uh, maybe. Say previous equals this thing question mark or this thing question mark oh you mean ternaries i, I thought you were talking yeah. about math and not about <laughs> well i don't know about what math ternary <laughs> means i don't even know what the word ternary means i just know what it means in uh, javascript sorry go yeah on. yeah uh, yeah sorry <laughs> okay uh cool cool current previews and now we have a result is negative. And then here you said we do. Are we trying to find percent delta? Yeah. So percent delta equals you had current it. minus previous over previous. Current minus previous. Same like this. Over. Over. Previous. Previous. previous? Yeah. OK. I mean, the three parts of the ternary operator is a point the appropriately named. Oh, is there like a quad quadrinary? Quadrinary? <laughs> for four? That would be neat. Ternary, duh. Oh, it's like tertiary. 
I mean, okay. for the three. Um, current minus previous over previous, and now should we just console log for now? Yeah. But I guess we're gonna have to use fake values for these to work because like we're not gonna wait twenty four hours on that stream. Plug in a previous value. Yeah. Hard yep. code a pre. Console log uh, of person delta. Oh, we don't even know if these are the right data types. We might have mm. to cast these. Oh, because they're going to be saved as... Stringified, no? Uh, yeah. Let's see. It's JavaScript. Okay. It doesn't okay. really care. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, so we want to plug... Uh, current we have. We want to plug previous. Oh, John's work alias found it. Do you want to fix it now? OK, let's... Let's put on settings general right above the working directory it's above section. The, I could have sworn I didn't see we it. We didn't see it. Settings right above the working directory. Oh, are you on the desktop app, John's? Ah, yeah, We're it's very likely. Web or web. I'm just checking. John's on the, Mark alias. Yeah, it is yeah. actually only available on the desktop one, but not on the web one. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And um, what did I do here? Oh yeah, previews should be. Um, let's put it just a bit higher then. No, yeah, let's make it 128. Cool. And then person delta. I can hide this. Send. Show. Minus. I can't see. It's behind your name. What's it say? <laughs> Minus uh, 3%. Let me, how do I show that like this? Oh, minus 3%. OK. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, it's uh, like the number, not the percent. Yeah. OK. So then you got to like times 100. Yeah. There's got to be a better way to make something <laughs> a percent. <laughs> No, We're I mean that's basic like the arithmetic here. That's like the I mean, I don't know how it's called in in English, but like when you have to three, float. three values you know, and then you're guessing the fourth one, the cross product, whatever. Oh yeah. I don't know, we have a name for that. That's I understand what you're saying, but I don't know the name for that either. <laughs> I mean, Sean was a math teacher. <gasps> That's, That's right. Sean was a math have. teacher. Sean, history. what is the name of that where you <laughs> multiply like two fractions, the top numerator and a denominator of a fraction, then you divide by the. Okay. Yeah, this thing. It's hard to like not have it in front of you. <laughs> That's why I wanted my. Wait, my did pen it print and paper. out correctly? Did it print out correctly? Cross multiply. That's the one. That's cross multiply, but then you have to divide. So what is that? Hey, what's the console? What has logged to the console? Minus 2.9. OK. OK? Correct. That's what we want, right? We should trim that off. OK, never mind. We have <laughs> limited time, Arlene. We, we do have limited even time. We have a monitor yet. We have done nothing because <laughs> we have I trying to use objects, which somehow I can't. Objects. Some Am I right? Yeah, be the death of me. Yeah. Um, OK. Console log person data, that's fine. Uh, and now we want to set up, uh, wait, we want to do stuff based on that, right? Like we want to error out or something. What do we want to do? So if it's greater, then you'll want to um, send a notification. And it, if not, then you'll want to null so that you don't go on to the next um, yep. request. Uh, this I always want to do. Uh, previous current. Close value. And can you hard code previous in your environment or collection variable? Because otherwise, we'll just keep overriding it. Uh, yeah. Sorry, we're jumping around a bit. We'll, we'll go one step at a time. Um, say that again. Sorry. Hard code the value for On current. row five, instead of hard coding it there, can you paste it into an environment yeah. or? Yeah. So basically, give this. So uh, it's collection variable. So let me go on the other screen. Actually, you said it already, right? In the collection? Yeah, but I yeah. said it. Well, the, the problem being, um, I said it here to be. And you already ran it, so there should be something there. Now. Yeah, but it's always going to be the same, right? Like, because 
we're I gonna okay. keep running it. So maybe we should keep it like here. So it's always false. Okay. But what we probably don't want to do to be able to send a notification mm -hmm. is to have the monitor fail. Right? Because that's how you can send notifications to people. What do you mean have the monitor fail? If you have a monitor that's running and it fails, you can set up so it sends an email notification to someone. So we could just use the built-in alert of Postman. Interesting. So instead of coding the um, notification mechanism, you're saying just go off of the basic monitor. How do you make a monitor fail? It's not failed test. It's like the monitor has to fail, no? Oh, no, I think it's failed test. Oh, uh, I see. I see. That notification. If I can find it. <laughs> I might oh, be on. Just, just put a test in there that fails. Yeah. If that so... happens, then PM test uh, falsy. <laughs> PM test falsy. Oh, PM test and then do expect <laughs> not true. You know what I mean? Uh, so if this happens, then pm dot test uh, falsy no. So the name of the test is going to be should fail. Should fail. I, I guess it says uh, wasn't. Oh, you should actually uh, string substitute in the delta in there. Wasn't current value is. Can I string, string substitute? You can if here. you use. Ooh. If you use here, yeah. Oh, you don't like that. Well, because that's is that a number, or is it a string? That's you, a number. Okay. I think you'll have to treat it as a string then to do the string concatenation. Or, mm -hmm. okay, try it. Try it. Uh, okay, and then here, do I just do? Okay, yeah. So this is going to be the function. Yeah. But uh, I mean, do I have to write a function? Can I just no, not like? You could go yeah, like. I can... um... Oh, false. Maybe Let's try. See. Oh, I wonder if that'll work. Right, fast. No. See, it, so that works. But it should actually fail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's do. PM expect. False. Oh, so I guess you do have to. Have the function. Okay, that's fine. Another function. That's us like, Yeah. False. <laughs> I, oh. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. But I think just... you you need an expect or something, right? Like if you just do that. Oh, I see. No, no, of course. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought <laughs> it was PM expect. Oh, false. PM expect false. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Well, no, we can just do PM expect. Uh, person delta to be greater than uh, lower than less than. I guess up to minus one percent. We don't really care. Oh, but it's true then. What if I do three? Okay, this fails. Okay. Do you get where I'm getting at? I'm actually yes. just writing the writing test. I don't. Test. I don't have yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. But do, what's the opposite of to be? Can I to not be? Yes. Oh, uh, I guess just to be greater. Can I? Yeah. Not be works, but greater than might be. Yeah. Yeah, that's two <laughs> double negatives. <laughs> To be greater than. Oh, I like that autocomplete. Minus two. Okay, cool. It fails. Because it's expecting it to be, but it's lower actually. Okay, cool. And now this, we set up a monitor on top of that? Yes. We. I don't think we've ever set up a monitor. We've talked about it. Let's do this. So I'm going to monitor the collection right here. So you're going to want to um, drag this, uh, drag this, 
or actually it's okay to run that other request i suppose there's no errors that'll stop it oh uh, yeah i, I see uh, well i mean this one will time out most of the time though so yeah delete it yeah it's or gone. drag it after yeah, yeah. okay uh squeeze squeeze squeen squeen okay that's what it goes collection version tag current environment we don't actually need it we do need it for the no it's at the collection is it level. collection level yeah i think it's all i thought you did an environment for i have something. one but we did you change it to collection variable i think i changed it all to collection variable we can attach okay. it anyway uh, i need to go back ah it's clean yes uh okay environment Tingo. Jimmy. we want to run it daily daily every once a day right oh, ah, okay so you need to do <laughs> weekly every day at uh is it my time Yes, it's your time if it's automatically select region. But if you select other times, and what time does the Tingo thing? It was time east the market? and five thirty p.m. Five thirty. So we can make it six uh, p.m. So it gives times for the some of the adjustments to come in, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. U.S. East. Yep. Okay. Receive email notification. Yes, please. Yes, please. Don't uh, tell me. No, I don't to need a screen score. <laughs> really interested. Um, just send always. Oh no. Hmm. So it stopped the notifications. I guess I get it once. I'm happy if I get it once. And don't retry if it fails, because if it fails, it's just I need it's to sell. Failed. Yeah. And that's all, right? Yeah, we don't need some of this is just to like simulate like other things. Yeah, yeah, I'll be nice. I remove it from here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, so it would run uh, sometime in like about a couple of hours, probably. But we can run it ourselves and see what happens. Manually, yeah. Let's see. It's running. Passed. Do you have any cool console logs that show show us anything or no? This request does not have any test. Did I not save my request? GG. Did not save my request. OK. No, I saved it, so I can run What's it again. GG? Um, good game. It can be said ironically if you do something the wrong way. Ah. Okay. <laughs> but you know what's weird? Go ahead and hit. Yeah. Ah. Scroll down. Let me see your tests. Yeah, so your test is inside an if block, so it only runs if uh, that happens. But it should happen, right? Because I'm hard coding this, and then clearly you're doing things right if you haven't gotten a GG from Arif yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I ever say GG to you, Hannah? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this may have happened. Uh, OK, so yeah, and I run it once already, so this should be set, right? Because obviously, the first time it ran, uh, didn't have anything saved, so it skipped that because uh, it wasn't a thing. It went all the way oh, to Oh, is it the values thing, the what initial mean? versus current values thing? Well, it's all collection, though. Yeah, but there's initial and current in collection as well. Oh, oh, so. So it's reading nothing. Well, yeah. it's hard coding current. But not okay. setting. No, because you're still running that. The first time. In that case, run, right? let's do old school. Old school. Oh. Old school what? Old school something went wrong. No, it's fine. Oh, okay. yes. Doing the app. OK. Um, so let me zoom in a bit. Cool. Uh, Windows in place. I have my Tingle request here. Um, GME, this should, no, OK. So this passes. But now, in the app, I can actually say to always press these variable values. Yay. Oh. <laughs> um, OK, and now, but I, I 
that's weird though. Because I have my monitor, right? I need yes. to delete this one. This one always sends me unwanted notifications. Sorry. Are you using it? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have triggered that. Now it's just okay. Um. Ah, Yay! here we go. Failure. It failed. <laughs> and now you should have gotten an email. Well, in a bit, you should. Oh. John's work alias. No, my lamp is broken. I need to reboot my server. Um, thank you for saying hi. Maybe that's why nobody's been saying hi to me lately because it's been down and I just didn't know it. <laughs> uh, how do I show my email without showing my emails? Hey, something just popped up in the bottom right, but our faces were over it. Was it just? Uh, no, it was but the other monitor. Okay. So that's the email I got. Ooh. All systems are critical. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never seen that before. Squeeze has been squozing. Current value is negative three. Sell, sell. Cool. Oh, damn. It's ringing, Joyce. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> okay, cool. Actually, yeah. That's Arlumi, funny. you did it. I didn't think you would be able to do it in the time allotted, but you did it. Yeah, I did like one of the four things we were supposed to do. <laughs> well, now if you have the game stock, if you're holding on to game stock, you'll be alerted within a day that the squeeze has been squoze. Well, this is so to be fair, I did not think we would use this feature, but this is pretty cool. Also, I just want to double check. I actually really liked because I've never even thought to use a monitor failure as the notification. I always pipe it into like a Twitter DM or a Twilio SMS or something um, yeah. or a Slack notification. I've not thought to just rely on the monitor notifications. And that actually came through pretty quickly. And so I double checked and unless I'm very wrong, it is available on any plan. So even if you're using Postman for free, you can do that. Um, so obviously we run it daily because we use that API. That is a free API as well uh, that only has like daily data. But you could run that more often on Tinga, like, Tingo, Tinga. Or sorry, we should post a link to that because I always spell it. Yeah, let me. There's a Spanish shredded chicken called Tinga, and I Tingo. always call it Tinga. Right here. Uh, let me send a link to the website. Oh yeah, we were supposed to do visualizer, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy hi, is in Jeremy. the chat. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. We need to look at to like how we can show Twitch em emotes on the stream. Yeah, that would we'll help. A request for restream. I think he says, "Yeah, I know FinHub, but I think um, and also yeah, I can't click I don't on the know link because, But I Let think. Is it free? Oh, you can get a free one. Okay. Well, well they so have those ETFs there. You can look at this, but my point was, uh, if you have a more recent one, this one is like daily, but you could run it every up to every five minutes or down to every five minutes, and get a notification for that, and you could use that for different things. So, again, uh, PS fives, Xbox stock. Uh, <laughs> cryptocurrencies, etc. Obviously, you want to want to build your um, own thing rather than using an external service. Uh, I think I would probably use an external service because it's also easier. Uh, but it's always interesting to see you can build that yourself in the um, in Postman or in probably other apps as well. Um, okay, so we did. We did not do the scrapping of the as the squeeze bin scores because the website was laggy, but also we don't know how to pass objects. That's fine. <laughs> We're going to learn um, learn from our mistakes. So we well, do here. What's kind of interesting about that scenario is that yes, like if we're having trouble parsing it, then typically what we do is just send and like inspect. But a lot of people work with low internet um, bandwidth. And so like we kind of simulated the pain of debugging in that scenario and I take it for granted that I have internet and it's like reliable and websites are up all the time but that's not the reality for everyone <laughs> revert to this okay cool so we did this um we didn't do this actually we did 
uh, creating a monitor on the collection that checks the value and compares, and then we did some math on it. Math. Uh, math. I like math. I actually only like certain type of math. I don't like math that much. Arithmetic. Uh, no. uh, it's uh, anyway. <laughs> but discussion for a future stream we've shown, um, and uh, compare the value if it's negative. Create a monitor that sends an alert directly to your email. I think you can. Um, yeah. Math is the best, says the ex-math teacher. <laughs> um, what I wanted to say was, yeah, you could use XML integrations as well. Um, there's integration that sends you text, I think, directly uh, using Postman monitors, for example. It's using emails at the moment, but you could do other things. What we didn't do is visualizers and Reddit API, which was one that I really wanted to do. So. That's some topic for my next streams because I'm always tasked to find ideas for other streams. So <laughs> that's too You're already done. You're always tasked with finding <laughs> ideas, Arlami. <laughs> no, just joking. Uh, but I think yeah, the, I like I like um, just like when we did the the Twitter one again, we like going through tweets and looking at sentiment or whatever. I like doing this kind of stuff, and I think Reddit. Reddit has a lot of sentiments on it, so it's a, it's an interesting <laughs> one yeah. to, um, to look at. Uh, cool. Do you want to? Uh, yeah. Do you want to just talk about some of our upcoming streams because we're at the end of our time together? Yes. Upcoming streams, fresh out of the press because fresh. we had a we had a meeting an hour ago. I mean, not an hour ago, two hours ago. Now we've choice to discuss what we were going to do. Um, Next week, you'll find Joyce again. This Potentially. Is the same Joyce that you have here. Still asking, yep. Potentially, she needs to confirm with the guest. But um, usually, I get all the gaming streams because I'm a gamer. a gamer. Yeah. But Joyce is also a gamer. She plays Settlers of Catan every other week. and I have a Nintendo Switch. And she has a Nintendo Switch. So she's going to probably do a gaming uh, thing where you can actually we just used a monitor and she's maybe going to use, we might be able to maybe, i haven't confirmed it maybe using monitors to control your uh, npcs in game tell people what npcs are if they're not gamers npcs being <laughs> non playable characters so in a game just like uh, pokemon for example you have non playable characters that are just waiting for you to go and talk to them to like trigger a gl or whatever um yeah she even won catan once i did not witness that but maybe one day it happened <laughs> I believe you. Uh, John's played Settlers uh, recently. It's yeah, it's it's a very good game, but it's very dependent on like your first move, basically, where you place your first um, like settler, basically. Then it's we like have civilization, which I like. Civilization is much more like intense. I feel. Uh, anyway, we can do a board game stream. Um, Something what we have written here, and both probably people that may attend this stream are on the stream currently. Uh, we said something with Twitter. So maybe we'll uh, get Sean and Andy on the stream. Uh, Andy some. Piper has been on the last three streams, I think. So we should definitely invite Andy to do something with Twitter. And um, we look at what we can do. And then for. Um, Oh, hello. <laughs> Carcassonne is the best game agreed. I've played so much Carcassonne. I don't know what that is. It sounds uh, awesome. it's it, it's very it's quite easy to play. And I think yeah, we we'll keep that for our next session with uh, Hannah. Um <laughs> cool. I think Andy and Sean are ready to to do this stream. So let uh, we'll sync up with them and clearly like define a topic. And then we have one more, which we've called Where is my cat? Uh, <laughs> And if it doesn't tell you everything about what's going to happen, I don't know what will. Um, but I'm there's so gonna excited be, about that one. There's going to be some uh, Raspberry Pi. There's going to be some uh, visual recognition, uh, custom classifiers, um, machine learning models, etc. So that would be um, that would be the streams for this month. Anything else to look forward to, Joyce? 
nothing else to look forward to. Um, I, I'll just say that like uh, me and Arlen, we just kind of spitball some of these ideas, but like uh, a board game, like just if you guys have ideas for streams, let us know because we're like at this point, it's kind of like what's interesting to us. Um, so just throw some ideas out there like cats. Arlemi loves like um, AI kind of things. So we tend to do some AI. I like cats. I have cats. <laughs> so if you don't want all of the streams for the rest of the year to be cats <laughs> and AI, better better send some uh, some topics our way. Yeah, orders. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, with that said, bye, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, we'll see you. Some of us will see you next week. Some of us will see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, keep them coming, Hannah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's just like word salad. Bye, everyone. Everyone, have a good day. Uh, have a good evening. Have a good night. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.